Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl, back with another great video for you today. And in this video, I'm excited to be sharing my haul with you from a fabulous local salvage yard called Eco Relics. They are in the Jacksonville, Florida area, and they just got in a massive collection of advertising from a local couple that was antiques dealers for years, and they set up their house like a general store, and every room had a different theme, and all kinds of fun advertising is over at Eco Relics right now for sale and you guys know how much I love my advertising so of course I had to go over there and see what all the fuss was about and boy they had some fantastic things so I am so excited to be sharing that with you today now if you're not following me on Instagram at vintage underscore and underscore vinyl you really should be because I've been sharing some sneak peeks from Eco Relics so you want to go check that out and see what incredible advertising they have for sale and today I'm rocking my Fat Bird Finds merch. So Laura and Mary Beth, I love my shirt. Lots of our fun vintage community YouTubers and sellers are having some fun merch for sale. So definitely go check out some of the merch in our community. I'll link everybody down below that's got some fun things right now. And I'll be debuting my Jello and Vintage and Vinyl merch soon, so stay tuned. So I could have spent hours at Eco Relics. The advertising they have just gotten in is absolutely fantastic. Total eye candy and just was pure heaven for me going through all of the things they have. They've worked hard to recreate the general store look and boy, it was so fun shopping over there. So I'll be back because they still have crates and crates to go through. But these are the things I picked up from Eco Relics and I am just so excited to add these to my collection. The first thing I got is a 1939 Coca-Cola thermometer. Now this is the Silhouette Girl and she is pretty hard to find so I was really thrilled that they had this for sale. Great price and just fabulous Coca-Cola piece. I love her drinking the Coca-Cola. Isn't she just fabulous? This is from 1939 and one of the ways that I knew this was authentic was it's got the Coca-Cola trademark and the swerve of the sea and then on the bottom, it's got Coca-Cola Company 1939, and that has the information of the tin manufacturer that made this piece. So this is going to look really cool next to my other gold Coca-Cola bottle thermometer from the same time period in my kitchen. So I was so thrilled to get her. Now she is missing the thermometer, but you know what? That's not really a big deal. I'm sure that I can find something that will go in there or it will just be cool on my wall. And I love finding old authentic Coca-Cola pieces. So this was a real treasure. Now, I also got some other fun, fun, fun advertising and anything with cool graphics just sucks you in and you gotta have it. And this piece, I believe to be from the 1900s, it is an old Tugstein Manufacturing Company 10. And when I did some research, I found out that these spark plugs were used in tractors. Now this is made out of Tugstein metal. The spark plugs inside would have been Tugstein metal. And they don't use those for spark plugs anymore for a number of reasons. And I'll link a fantastic article down below if you wanna read the science behind it. They use platinum now, and there's a long history about that, but the short story is basically, I think that even though Tugstein is a very hardy metal, it's prone to corrosion and other problems that platinum and other metals are not. So they do not use Tugstein anymore in spark plugs, but this is a fabulous tin from the 1900s, and look at the graphics. Look at that old spark plug on there. I mean, this is just fantastic. It says the Tugstein Manufacturing company out of Marshalltown, Iowa. Of course, everything's made in the USA back then because quality was so important. We've kind of gone away from that now, unfortunately, with our products, but you see a lot of things being marked heavy duty or made to last because things really were made better back then. But this green and gold tin is absolutely stunning, perfect for my collection, and I can't wait to see it in its final home for half inch spark plugs, tug steam manufacturing tin is definitely a winner. And this is just so fabulous. So I love that. That was a real treasure to find. 
Now I also got some paint tins. Now these are uh, pigments that you would have put in paint and they come in the jar. Now these are still full, which is just amazing. I can't get the lids off anymore, but it's really cool when you find old products that actually still have the products inside. So this is Alpha Color Dry Tempura. Now both of these color tins I got are yellow, so it must have been a yellow theme day and this just has some cool graphics now i couldn't find anything about this company online so i don't know particularly when this tin is from my guess would be 1950s or so just given by the graphics the best way to date old tins is to first look up the company figure out when they were around what products they made when they sold those products but you can also look for other identifiers like the graphics on the tin when might the graphics be from the font particularly will give a lot of times a good identification on date you can also look for zip codes and none of these tins i bought have zip codes so you know that they're before 1963 when five digit zip codes were used now before 1963 they did use two digit zip codes but those were in the late 40s and they were only for big cities so think like new york and la but in 1963 when the mail system really really needed help to uh, send mail to a more specific location they used five digit zip codes and so after 1963 things will have five digit zip codes you can also look for barcodes or UPC codes and those came out around 1973 so if you see a barcode or a zip code know that it's probably around that time or newer of course some pieces might have a barcode and a price tag on it because not all companies or stores were able to convert to the barcode right away so sometimes you still see the barcode with the old price tag still on it so this is a fabulous alpha color dry tempura tin wonderful little piece it's uh, made in chicago heights illinois just a very very cool advertisement piece I also have, with the paint theme, I have a watercolor paint. This is Morallo Art Colors. This is the Morallo Company out of Staten, Ohio. Now this is a primary yellow. Just really fantastic graphics. This is a cardboard tin and it still has the paper label. You do not see tins with the paper label very often that is still intact. So this was a real fantastic find. Now this is probably, I'm guessing, from the 1940s, maybe 30s, just judging by the graphics. It does sort of have like an Art Deco-y look to me. So I don't know much about this company, but I did find that I believe the Morello uh, paint is still being made today. I saw some for sale on Lowe's.com, of course in a more modern tin, the one gallon bucket. So I believe this company is still around. I couldn't find much more information though. So it may not be the same company or maybe they've morphed, you know, that happens with a lot of companies is that they combine or they sell uh, out to another company, particularly with old depression glass, molds got sold a lot. So sometimes that all gets very complicated, but this is a fantastic tin with great graphics. I just love the palette with the paint brushes there. I also picked up two shoe polish advertising tins and these are ones that I have been wanting for a long time but have never found in the wild and so I was so thrilled when they had these for sale at Eco Relics. The first one is Atlas Shoe Polish. This is from the 30s or 40s and it is in fantastic condition. I love any old advertising with the globe. I just think that is so cool and it's got the fabulous graphics. I mean, this is when advertising was really made better, I think, because look, the whole tin is decorated. It is just really eye-catching and stunning. And if you saw this in a store, wouldn't you want to buy this over the plain boring one? <laughs> You'd buy this over the competition just because of the graphics. I mean, it really does pull you in. I think that our advertising pales in comparison to some of the old advertising back in the day. You just can't beat it with a stick. Now this has a little piece on the side and you know what? I'm not sure what that is for. I'm going to have to do some more research, but if you guys know what this little piece on the side of the tin is used for, let me know. It might be uh, something to open the tin with or maybe something with shoelaces. I'm not exactly sure what this is. 
um, but I love the Atlas shoe polish. Now I don't believe Atlas is around. I don't think you can get Atlas shoe polish at the store anymore, but the next tin I'm about to show you is made by Griffin, and you can still get Griffin shoe polish. It's for sale at Walmart, so you can still find Griffin, and this is a very cool tin, probably from the 1950s. Again, just judging by the graphics here, and of course there's no zip code, so I do know this is an older piece. This is a fantastic piece of advertising here. Love that black and white. It's ABC Black Griffin Shoe Polish. And on the back, it still has the price tag for roses. It was sold at Roses for 17 cents. Now, is that not amazing? I love old advertising with the sticker. Anything with the sticker, the price sticker, is just so cool because it's neat to see what these things were sold for back in the day. And you can always do a converter online and see with the inflation rate what that would have cost in today's money, which is really fun. So this is Griffin Shoe Polish Silicone Wax. Just really cool. This was made in Boyle. Um, in Boyle Midway, oh Boyle Midway Incorporated, but it was made in Brooklyn, New York and Los Angeles, California and other places. Just a very, very neat, really cool advertising tin that's decorated all the way around on the outside and it's just fabulous. So I was so thrilled to finally get these two shoe polish tins. Now the last tin that I'm going to share with you today out of my whole Eco Relics haul is one that just brought back some fun memories. I believe this is probably from the 50s or 60s, uh, probably early 60s because again there's no zip code on this, but this is Firestone Tube Repair Kit. Now how many of you remember going to Firestone? They're still around today, but I remember as a kid going going to Firestone and getting our car repaired or the oil changed. I always thought it was so fun to look in the parking lot for old little bolts and, and, and screws. I've always been a collector at heart. I'd always look around the parking lot for fun things that I could collect. But this is a Firestone tube repair kit. And what's neat about this is it still has the stuff inside so you could do a tube repair. I'm sure it wouldn't be good anymore. But this is just a very cool tin. Love that red with the black and white graphics. I mean, that is just stunning. And it has the old Firestone logo, which is just so cool. I mean, you cannot beat this old advertising at all with a stick. It is fantastic. And I cannot wait to show you guys on Instagram where I put these tens. I have a whole collection of old advertising and it just makes my little heart happy. I would love to set up my house like an old general store. That would just be my dream. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I picked up at Eco Relics. I really did get some fabulous things and I can't wait to go back because I know they have lots more advertising and I'll be sharing that with you. Maybe I can do a live shop with me. Would you guys like that? I think that would be fun. So we'll do a live shop with me sometime from Eco Relics when I feel like it's safe to go over there and uh, I'll share some of the fun advertising they have. So guys, that's all I have for you today. And I hope as always, you will stay in, stay safe, and binge YouTube. Bye-bye now.